Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday, November 5th. I hope you got out and voted. Really do. We definitely need you out there voting and doing your American rights and all and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so I was thinking, like, maybe I could do, like, an intro, like a Pokemon professor or anything, because the, the whole concept of what I'm doing here is very basic. It's just a simple playthrough. It's the characters involved. Um, I just thought about it. I should have put on my... I should have put on my Pokemon Professor uh, overcoat. So I've got some Pokemon attached to it and everything. But the concept, we got to dive into this to explain something that anybody that hasn't seen this hasn't been around. So, yes, I do play female characters in this. Uh, the reason for that is just because I prefer that. No other reason. No disgusting reasons for it. So the thing that I tried to come up with to explain it is that I am a Pokemon professor, and what you're actually watching is my daughter run around being a Pokemon trainer. Uh, I don't actually have a child, so don't ask that. Just kind of infer that we got to turn that off and uh, we let the screen go. Just kind of infer that Rachel here is actually Pokemon Professor Natanis Lycan's daughter is kind of the thing that I'm going for. And that's kind of the thing I want to, that's what I want the Pokemon series to be about and everything when I do Pokemon on my channel. So yeah, here we are. We got, uh, we still got the, the two breeding pair here. Um, I do need to make one little change, because I forgot about this. This is going to be kind of weird, because the way I've got this set up, I can actually see myself in the bottom corner over there. Uh, so I can see the screen and everything. I can see my logo over in the other corner. Yes, I'm pointing at the EV. I've got the... I've got the camera... Oh, excuse me. i got the camera flipped. Uh, so it's actually backwards of what it should be because this is my left hand. It's definitely going to look like it's my right hand, but that's my left hand. Um, so we got the logo over there and everything. And this way I can I can literally see chat right here if anybody types anything. And then up there in the middle, I can also see the uh, any followers. And hopefully we get... I would like to get one this time around to see if I fix the, the follower alert. Uh... It is kind of weird to talk about. But yeah, here here we are. We need to go ahead. We've got a whole bunch of EVs, EV eggs already. I don't know where I actually left off on collecting eggs. Yeah, so we got box 21. And that starts all the way down here at like three. Yeah, three. So we got plenty of eggs to go through and hatch. And hopefully we can get to the point where we're actually getting this playthrough on the way. Uh, you will see right there in this box, I do have the EV evolutions that we will be starting with. So let's go over this because it has been a little while since I managed to stream Pokemon. Uh, you know, life issues and everything. So we got Reinar, the Flareon. We got Ty, the Jolteon. Ty has always been on my team. Ty has been my electric type for like forever uh you can't see the information i just realized that the subscriber thing the subscriber goal is over the top of that um can't see his level at all because that's that information is right there well we're not going to worry about but you can see that it is level one so these are all level ones these are fresh uh uh egg hatches so then we got zex it is a shiny vaporeon zex is a name that i actually got from gundam and i've just used it for vaporeon for like forever we got Psy the espion uh that's kind of boring and basic but i always thought it felt right to call him Psy. um then you got yo the shiny umbreon uh yo is a little joke um so a friend of mine, years and years ago, you're talking about 20 years ago, uh, we were playing 
I think it was Pokemon Red or something, and we were talking about some of our favorite Pokemon in the game and everything, and I forgot exactly the the exact details, but he had said something about naming a Pokemon Yo, which is what I heard. That was incorrect. I don't remember what it was he actually said, but ever since then, and actually it wouldn't have been red, it would have been uh, gold and silver, because that's where Umbreon came from. Uh, ever since then, I have named a uh, Umbreon Yo, so that's where that name came from. And then once we get our shiny Sylveon, I am going to name it Sil Silver. I just feel like Silver was a very fitting name. So that will be our starting group to go. Unfortunately, we cannot get uh, Glaceon and Leafeon without progressing in the story. So, oh, gosh, it's been a minute. I got to remember what button does what. Because I haven't played this in like, ah, ah, okay, here we go. So in order to get a... An ice stone, we have to be able to get up here. There's a few problems with that, and one of them is first off, we don't have the ability to really jump and fly or climb yet. So, getting up here is possible, it's just not very likely or very easy to do. Uh, the other problem is, in order to do that. Okay, no, it's not on this side. It's for the 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 uh, leaf stone. I believe the leaf stone is up in this area here. But in order to do that, we do have to progress through at least one of the the main story elements, and that's this one right here. Uh, the only way to get through any of this area early game without any of your core abilities, like your climbing and your uh, flying and everything, we have to go through the fire area, the the fire group of the team star. So, yeah, we can't really get all the way up there very easily. Now, I was able to get over here. No. Yes. No. Yes, because I have the I have the path there. So, yeah, I did find a way around that. Forget what I was saying. There, there was a reason. I don't remember what it was. I think, I think it is that we need the abilities for like climbing and things to get to these areas, in order to even get the eye stone and the leaf stone. Uh, we'll worry about that sometime later. The thing about Glaceon and Leafeon is Glaceon is actually kind of terrible, uh, as far as ice types are concerned. Ice types are probably the weakest type in the game. They, they are really, really strong, but they cannot take a hit. They are the glass cannons for a reason. And I don't really see a reason to use ice. Uh, grass has a different problem. Grass, in my opinion, is the most useless type in the game. And hear me out on this. Hear me out. Because I know what you're thinking. Grass is abundant. It's bulky. It's got a lot of diversity. The problem is what grass covers versus some of the others some of the other typings that you can get. And I've talked about this in other videos. So grass really only covers water, ground, and rock. That is it. That is really the only, ooh, excuse me, uh, effective use for grass. So let, let's go over this. Water, one of the most abundant types. Well, as effective as grass is against water, so is electricity. And the thing with electricity, or electrics, electric type Pokemon, is you can also cover uh, flying types. Which flying types in every game has always had a section where there's just tons of flying types and there's flying type trainers. So I don't bother with grass to take on water because electric will cover two types that that gives you an extra one type that uh, you're covering there. As for ground and rock, well, water covers that really well, and you almost always need a water type for one reason or another. In Scarlet and Violet, you really 
don't need it for the reasons that I'm thinking. And that was because, you know, like HMs back in the day, allowing you to move across the water and everything, you really needed surf. So I always use a water type to deal with like ground and rock types. And then on top of that, you also get to cover uh, fire types with the water type. So we've effectively covered a wider range of Pokemon with just using electric and water than we would have with uh, grass. So grass to me is probably one of the most useless types out there. It does have a diverse move pool and everything, but that move pool is kind of similar to bug types, and bug types are just as numerous as grass, and there's a lot of bugs that I actually prefer over grass types. Grass types in general, I, I don't really care about them. I'm not a huge fan of them. I, I do like Leafeon, but I, I don't see me actually even bothering to use it. So our team, for when we actually manage to start this, or more correctly, Rachel's team, for when we actually start this, will be Flareon, the fire type, which is kind of disappointing because I'm not a huge fan of Flareon, but we are doing a team-based, uh, an EV-based team. Uh, Jolteon, again, one of my absolute favorite electric types in the entire game. I almost always use a, a Jolteon. Uh, a Vaporeon, not a huge Vaporeon fan. Same problem as Flareon. There's just better Pokemon out there. Uh, Espeon is probably the best EV evolution of them all, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's very fast. It hits hard, and... In general, it has a decent move pool. Uh, really, none of the EV evolutions have a great move pool. That's why Flareon is actually probably the worst fire type in existence. Um, then you got Umbreon, which is... Dark types are... They're good, but bad. The, the, really, the only good thing about the dark types is the ability to cover both Psychic and Ghost. And in the past... Uh, because I played from Gen 1 onward, uh, trying to deal with ghosts and psychic types has always been a huge problem because you need specific things to land or you need specific move types like fire moves, electric moves, water moves, and that's about it. If you take any kind of like physical move, which even before the physical split, back in, like, what was that, Gen 3 or something, or Gen 4, uh, there were certain moves based on types that would and would not hit certain Pokemon, such as Ghost. For instance, a lot of uh, grass-type moves are technically physical, and again, this is before the physical special split, but because they are technically physical attacks, they wouldn't hit Ghost back then. So things like Leaf Blade, Leaf Blade, uh, Razor Leaf, and Vine Whip would not touch them. You could not hit a Ghost type with a Grass move back then. However, Water, Electric, and Fire, you could hit them with. So, again, there's yet another reason why I don't bother with that. And uh, Dark dark types coming into the game, like I, I've been sold on those ever since because being able to cover two of the most powerful types in the game aside from dragons is absolutely amazing but dragons were so rare and kind of like not a huge threat in my opinion i know a lot of the bigger youtubers and everything constantly talk about how big of a threat dragons were back then because nothing affected them that that's bs um there were certain things that you could do that would just destroy what few dragons there were back then. Uh, I don't remember any dragon users ever being that difficult. Uh, Sword and Shield's dragon user, I forget his name. I just absolutely forgot it. I don't count him because he would be better categorized as a ground uh, user. He's not really a dragon trainer. He's a ground trainer. And he's got a whole different mechanic going with him. But I'm just like, he's not really dragon. He's a ground user. And the ground's a whole other animal. Um, so he is, he's probably the most difficult one. Um, as far as, like, Cynthia, uh, 
I don't remember Cynthia ever being a huge issue. I remember certain other ones being a bigger problem than Cynthia. But you are talking that's been many years ago, and unlike all these other big YouTubers, I'm not playing every single one of these games. Uh, like and subscribe if you want me to play more of them. We'll, we'll see if we can make that work. But anyway, we got to get to hatching. I didn't grab any eggs just then. And I don't know what we're going to do because all we all we do is just run around hatching eggs and everything. So I really, without any plans on conversations or chats, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of up in the air with this. And I always just, I end up talking about whatever is on my mind, which unfortunately is a subject that we don't want to talk about right now wrong button. It has been a minute since I even played this. And that, that is mostly because we've been uh, trying to get a lot of other things due. For the nine millionth time, I am unemployed currently, so trying to find work is very important. Though we're not having any luck because there's nothing in this town. Alright. So, let's get on with this. Where am I at? I'm over here. Okay. So all I've been doing in this particular area is just circling around and circling around and just hatching eggs and everything. Um, so yeah, that's what we got going on there. I do, I would like on down below in the comment section when this goes to YouTube later, if you're watching this and if you got past my rant about uh, different types and everything, I know my opinion is very different from everybody including all like big pokemon youtubers or even the uh competitive scene but you the competitive scene is a is a completely different animal they're looking at pokemon for utility for different reasons and uh like stats i don't really care about that stuff uh if you like something use it and figure out how to make it work Every Pokemon is viable, you just gotta figure out how. Except for Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet is not viable. And uh, Togodomaru. Sc screw that Pokemon. <laughs> I hate Togodomaru. I, I just completely uh, lost track of what I was talking about. Uh... So we're just going to go with the subject that is now on my mind because people may be wondering, why do you hate Toga Tomorrow? What is wrong with Toga Tomorrow? Okay, so let me explain. In, in the uh, Pixelmon mod pack, you, you don't have the ability to heal very easily starting off. Once you get further into the game, it's like any other Pokemon game where you've built up resources and you've got money and you can buy all sorts of potions. Yeah, um, it's the same kind of deal. With, excuse you. It's the same kind of deal with uh, Pixelmon, where you're starting off fresh, you don't really have a whole lot, and it's kind of frustrating to get going, especially in Pixelmon, because unlike mainstream Pokemon games, you could run into a Pichu that is level 65 and you're level 5 so the the leveling in that game is a pain in the butt sometimes because if you run into something that's super strong and you can't get away from it it's just going to one shot kill your uh, your Pokemon so and that's exactly what happened to me with a Toga tomorrow um, I had a world where the closest healing station to me was over a thousand blocks away. The closest one I could find was a thousand blocks from where I had made my home. And one of the times where I went out there to heal up my starter, which was a Charmander, uh, Charmander is probably my favorite starter. We won't get into that for a few minutes. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so, 
went over there, healed up, was on my way back. And in that game, there are certain biomes spawn certain types of Pokemon. Well, Toko tomorrow is very common in uh, Taiga biomes. So as I'm walking through the Taiga biome, I'm about 100 blocks away from where I'm making my base. 100 blocks. It's over 1,000 blocks one direction. So I'm getting very close to my base, and out of nowhere, here comes this Toga tomorrow. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, Toga tomorrow is... I can deal with that until I see its level. Remember, I'm like level 5 or 6, because this is a brand new world and everything. I haven't done much. This Toga tomorrow is like level 47. It one shot hits my Charmander, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I've got to walk all the way back again. In order to get my Pokemon healed. So I did that. And from that point on. There, there, there's certain items. Every single Pokemon in the game. Drop. It's kind of like here. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Where they drop certain items. And Togemaru happened to drop. Uh, one of the plate pieces. That you need for all of the. Technology. In that pack. And I hunted Toga tomorrow like they needed to go extinct. And I hunted them and hunted them and hunted them. I was so mad at them because that that walk in the early game was ridiculous. And to have my Pokemon get knocked out when I'm just feet away from getting back home was frustrating. So... From that point on, I hate Toga tomorrow, and I, I go out my way to destroy them and humiliate them. I hate them that much. Now, I did bring up starters, so we are going to talk about that real quick. I do have a video where I talk about my favorite starters, and from what you could infer about what I was talking about with uh, grass types, you'll know right off the bat that 99% of the Pokemon franchise, I have never used a grass starter. There is one grass starter that I decided that it was going to be my starter for that particular game. And if you're on YouTube, I'd like you to pause and take a wild guess which grass starter it was that I actually thought was going to be viable and tried to use. And I ended up hating it. For other reasons that we will get to. So let's start off with the original trio. And honestly it would probably be beneficial to me to pull up the. To pull up the picture. So that I can remember all of them. Because I am not. I don't have every single aspect of Pokemon memorized. I am a fan but I am not a super super duper nerd on that and have every single stupid pokemon memorized uh where is here's all the starters except for this doesn't have yes it does so i can put this yeah i can put this over here close that for now okay so, the original trio, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. You already heard me say it. Charmander is my favorite. Uh, this does not go with the guess that I just had you guys make, but my original first starter actually wasn't Charmander. My very first starter was Bulbasaur. Uh, back then, in the anime and everything, Bulbasaur was the Pokemon that I really liked, and I decided to go with uh, the problem became when I first played, I think I had Pokemon Red. I think my brother had Blue. I'm not really sure I remember exactly, but I think I had Red. But the, the problem that I found with Bulbasaur was that after Misty, which is the first two gym battles, it became absolutely useless. There was no reason to have Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, or... Venusaur whatsoever in the whole rest of the game. There was literally no use for them throughout the rest of the game. 
Now, you could argue that it would work really good against Lieutenant Surge, or you could argue that it would work really good against uh, uh, Bruno. Is it Bruno? And possibly Giovanna. Giovanni. Uh, I never thought so. It never, it never really seemed to be any better than it was against both Brock and Misty. And I know how... Mikey of M and J plays talks about you know the the more useful a Pokemon is early, the better it is as a starter. I'm the exact opposite. You really need one that's going to carry you later on. The early game is usually too easy because there are either ways to get around it or there are Pokemon available to deal with that particular uh, gym battle. There, there's always Pokemon nearby that help you deal with that gym battle. Except for one one particular game. I don't remember which one it was. But I do remember that you didn't get access to Pokemon that would help you against that gym until after you beat the gym. So for, let's say, like uh, an electric gym, the very next route would have ground types on it. For the water gym, the very next route would have electric and uh, grass types on it. So it was kind of like that for that particular game. I don't remember which game that was. I want to say that was like black and white. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, that I'm, I'm on the opposite end of that. I think the, the, the starter that you choose should be more helpful later in the game than it is early. Uh, the early ones usually don't matter because while they while in while Mikey has said that there are a few choices, that is actually baloney. There is actually quite a few choices for dealing with some of the early gems. You just got nowhere to find them. Uh, let's go on to Gen Two. So we got we got Totodile, Chikorita, and Cyndaquil. Uh, I was always a Cyndaquil fan. It may be the worst fire starter in the entire franchise, but I absolutely love Cyndaquil. I love Typhlosion. It's a great Pokemon. I, I don't have much to say about that. Uh, Totodile's pretty cool, but I've never really used or even liked Peraligator, and I despise Chikorita. I do agree with most big Pokemon YouTubers and everything that Chikorita is absolutely the worst starter in all of Pokemon. It's not the ugliest, but it is the worst. Okay, so moving up, let's go to Gen 3, and I hate these three. I despise them. I did use Torchic. Torchic was my my starter for Gen 3. And uh, right now, do you notice a pattern going on? So we have Charmander, we have Cyndaquil, and we have Torchic. Uh, I absolutely could not stand Trico. Trico's final evolution, which I don't even know the name of, that's how much I don't like it, uh, is, again, it's a grass type, I think it's useless. Mudkip and Swampert are, in my opinion, very overrated. They are powerful, don't get me wrong, I just think that they're overrated because people talk about how much they love it. They don't love it, the only reason that, that they love it is because it's kind of a cheaty Pokemon. It is a water ground type. So that means that electricity doesn't really affect it all that well. You absolutely have to use a grass type against it. And the Trico in that particular game is it, it's terrible compared to Swampert. Uh, of all the games, you've never seen the water type well, actually, you haven't seen a grass type be really good, but the water type being overpowered very rarely happens. I do know that Squirtle and Blastoise is probably the strongest uh, Gen 1 starter, simply because it has bulk damage and uh, a diverse move pool. But M Mudkip and Swampert just destroy everything because they, their, their only weakness is to grass types, and it's a bulky Pokemon. So it's it's kind of a cheaty one in my opinion. People like it because it's hard to it's hard for it to get knocked out. They, they like it because it's overpowered, basically. I don't like it. It looks it looks dumb. 
I don't like the design of it. The move pull of it, I, I'll give it the move pull. The move pull is pretty good. But again, it's an overpowered Pokemon. Uh, I did use Torchic, and I liked Blaziken, but I, I can't stand Gen 3 starters. They are probably... They are probably the second or third worst design set of Pokemon in the entire franchise. The worst one is, like, further up the chain. Okay, uh, let's move on from there. Gen 4. So we got Chimchar, Tor... Uh, Chimchar, Piplup, and... I'm looking right at it. What is its name? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, what is your name, sir? My mind is completely blank. I'm looking right at it, and I can't think of its name. Oh, wrong thing. I just closed that out. I didn't mean to. <laughs> what is your name, little dude? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I accidentally closed that out, so we got that back up. I've got to look it up. I can't remember. My mind is completely blank. Turtwig. There we go. Turtwig. Wow, I cannot believe I couldn't remember that. Okay, so that's Chimchar, Turtwig, and Piplup. That's your Gen 4 starters. Take a wild guess which one was my starter. If you guessed Chimchar, you'd be 100% right. Yes, notice a theme going on. Uh, I love Chimchar. Manfernape and Infernape. I uh, those Manferno. I absolutely love those. The whole um not Goku. What's Oh my mind just went completely blank on that too. The uh the mythology from Chinese from China. Sun Goku. The actual monkey that it's based on. Wow, I can't think of it. I ab Anyway, I absolutely love that. Uh, Turtwig was a really cool one. I definitely like Turtwig and... Um... Wow, um, I'm really blanking on names now. I am really blanking on names. Torterra? It's Torterra, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's Torterra. Where is your... Why do I go to the wiki? I hate using the wiki. Yeah, I'm just going to click off of that because I don't like using the wiki. The wiki doesn't work that well, in my opinion. It's always kind of glitchy. But yeah, uh, Torterra. We'll just go with that. Um, Torterra is really cool. Piplup and Empoleon, I don't really care about. It's it's probably one of the few water types that I've just like, eh, whoop de doo uh, And having the, the steel type was interesting. I just now never found it useful. Uh, as Chimchar is the second fire fighting type, that is probably the best combo that they've made throughout the entire franchise. Like, fire and fighting just goes together so well because you got two very physical types there that are meant for, like, a whole bunch of damage. So, even, even if we've got, like, physical versus special moves, it doesn't really matter. They're still going to hit very hard. So, again, yeah, I just, I love Infernape. Infernape is one of my favorite fires of all time. Uh, it even beats out Charmander. 
and it's very very difficult for me to actually choose between and one of the things that i have thought about doing in the future is i would like to if if i got another copy of this i don't want to erase data i'd have to get like a whole nother system or something I, <coughs> excuse me i would love to do a full-on uh fire team like team fire or something you know, it's just off the top of my head but yeah doing a full-on uh team of just fire types would be amazing there's a few of them that i would absolutely love to use that i've never really used before because there's other fire types i'd prefer to use uh charizard and infernape are very very hard for me to choose between typically though i am going to go for the charizard especially if uh if the mega stones are available so let's go from there let's go on to uh gen 5 we got torpig uh sneevy and oshawott okay i i'm not a big fan of any one of these i did use uh T pig i did use T pig i said that completely wrong earlier i did use T pig it it was all right and part of the reason i seem to remember that, that was the game where you literally only had like four fire types in the entire game i think it was the T pig a ponita and then something else like a couple others like maybe a uh, growlith or something possibly nine tails i don't remember but i do remember that, that was one of the games that had very few fire types available um, and that's actually why i used uh torchic because i think the the only fire type you could find for like forever was rapidash and it wasn't even rapidash you could find ponita ponita and that's part of the reason why i used torchic yeah not a big fan of any of those and then we move on to gen 6 and gen 6 turned everything upside down by introducing the fairy type i know i didn't talk about introductions for all of them there's some of them i don't actually remember and despite claims that ice types had been around since gen 1 that is actually false uh ice as a type did not exist I don't remember where it came in at. It was either Gen 3 or Gen 4 where ice was officially a type. Same for ground. There were moves for those types. They were not an actual type. There were no Pokemon of that type. And I, a lot of people say that, and that is completely incorrect. They were not type. They were not a type back then. Ice was not an actual type. It was an, a, a, an attack type, not a Pokemon type. Um, I don't remember where it got, where it and ground. And I think there was one other uh, that also got introduced. It was like ice and ground and something else where they became official types and they actually had Pokemon that were that type. Uh, I don't, again, I don't remember what generation that was in. That was like three or four. But before then, it didn't exist as a Pokemon type. Uh, so, back to what we were talking about. So, Finnegan. Finnegan. Okay, as far as, like, the base evolution of Pokemon types, like, their, their very first evolution, Finnegan is probably my favorite fire. The little fox is amazing. I love it. Uh, I have never actually used Finnegan or its evolutions, which is why I'm not going to try and say them, because I don't remember it. Um, but yeah, it it just, it never, it never really felt like a good fire type to me. I just was not a big fan of the whole witchy look of it. Uh, then we got Chessman with uh, its final evolution, which I can't remember the name of either again i'm not a big grass type user i don't i'm not a fan of it, pretty much any of the grass types chessman was really close i probably could use it and then we've got my boy froki and greninja i absolutely love greninja 
if they're if I am forced to use a water type, I want to use Greninja. It, it would be Froki all the way if I had to do like a playthrough where I start off with the the water type. It would it would have to be Gen Six with Froki. I absolutely love Greninja and its water dark typing. It is absolutely amazing and is definitely my favorite uh, water starter of the entire series. So from there, we're going to move on to Gen 7. And this is where where I mentioned uh, that Gen 3 is my least favorite. Well, then we get Gen 7. I don't like any one of these. And it's nothing to do with their starter form. Like, Litten, I love Litten. The little cat is amazing. I do not like its final e evolution in Incineroar. I cannot stand it. It looks ridiculous. Uh, Rowlet. Rowlet is really cool, but I don't even know its final evolution name because I don't care for it. I don't like the archer look of an owl. I know it's supposed to be kind of this Robin Hood-esque thing, but it, it just looks ridiculous. Uh, Decidueye. Decidueye. Uh, I would more than likely use Decidueye over the other two. Which is saying something because I don't like grass types. Um, Piplup. No, not Piplup. Poplio was actually my starter for this generation. Um, <laughs> okay, I need to kind of explain that too because I went into this blind. This was the first time that I didn't see anything related to the starters. I didn't know what their final evolutions looked like. I had no idea what their chain looked like. I didn't even know what their secondary uh, typing was. I went into it completely blind. And I, I made the decision when I was looking at the Pokemon. I was like, okay, I'm going to look for this trait. If I see this trait, this is what I'm going to pick up. And the trait that I was looking for is because your character actually physically picks them up. What I was looking for is whichever one smiled. And that was Poplio. Poplio smiled, so I went with that, and oh my gosh, that stupid mermaid is the dumbest looking, there are some pretty bad looking Pokemon in there, but I usually base what Pokemon look good based on the starters, and Gen 7 has the set of starters that I am still reluctant to say is the worst looking starters in all of Pokemon. I don't like a single one of those. Not one. They are horrid. I don't like the mermaid. I don't like the archer. I don't like the mask wrestler. Uh, Incineroar is the mask wrestler. If you don't know what a mask wrestler is, where have you been? Because it's basically what Incineroar is. I don't care for it. I don't like it. It is dumb. Uh, Incineroar, I, I will acknowledge... That Incineroar has probably been one of the most influential Pokemon in competitive Pokemon. I don't care. You, the only reason people really use something like that is because of how OP it is. They're not looking at it and being like, oh, this looks good. It looks horrible. I, I can't stand it. Uh, so moving on from there, we are going to go to Gen 8. And, oh my gosh, I love the Gen 8 Pokemon. Okay, um, Score Bunny is the one that I go with. I absolutely love Score Bunny. That is because I was a soccer player as a child. So, it being fire type and it has a motif of uh, playing soccer, I love it. It is my absolute favorite. Uh, Grokey, I don't know its final evolution name. I apologize, I should learn that one, because I absolutely love the motif of it being a drummer. Because, guess what? I, I mean, I may not be good enough or have a setup where I can actually play the drums, but I am a drummer. So I love Grokey, I love its aesthetic. Uh, Sobble. Okay, so, <laughs> Sobble's a little bit weird, because it goes through stages and phases, and it ends up with a... A, a James Bond kind of motif. Well, I do really enjoy James Bond. And even though I have not used Sobble and its final evolution, uh, Inteleon, I would probably, of those three starters, of any of them, I would probably use the entire set. 
That is probably the only set of starters that I would use all of them. And that may be a surprise to a lot of people because they're like, what about this and this? Or this one's better than that? Or no, 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 no. I love the Gen 8 starters. All three of them are amazing. I love all three of them. I have never used all three of them, mind you, but if there was ever a reason for me to use all three starters in a set, it would be Gen 8. Gen 8 is my favorite set of starters. I love all three of them. Gen 9. Scarlet and Violet. You got Fue Coco. The ridiculous looking alligator thing. It is I can't stand it. It's dumb as heck. It looks like it has a synthesizer on its nose, and it's got some kind of little fire bird sitting on it. No. No. It just... I can't stand it. Like, it's supposed to be, like, synthesized music or something. Uh, no. Um, Quaxley. Quaxley being a dancer. I don't like this for a different reason, and most people don't even realize what they're looking at. They just, they look at it and they just think, oh, it's a dancer. I'm, I'm here to tell you right now that Quaxley is not just any dancer, okay? What Quaxley actually is <clears throat> Do you, you gotta forgive me because this is the most ridiculous thing they've ever put in Pokemon. And there's a reason why I hate these games particularly. Now, we are doing the EV playthrough in here because it's the only game that you could do this in. It's the only game where you could set up your team before you even start. There, I do have my reasons, and I just realized we've been running around without any eggs. <laughs> so let me do this real quick. Um, Uh, the, the, uh, Quaxley is a very particular thing, and I'm I'm actually stalling because I, my brain is just not with it today. Like I cannot think of what Quaxley actually is. Most people don't even put two and two together to realize what is going on, what is being shown to them. Um, oh, I got it. I just remembered. Uh, Quaxley, its final evolution is a drag queen. It is not just a simple dancer of any type. It is a very specific one. It is a drag queen. So anybody that's saying that this game is meant for kids, and you argue with me over the things that I pointed out for Scarlet and Violet, no, no, no. Take a look at it. Quaxley's Final Evolution is a drag queen. That is what that is. Um, and then Sprigarito. If you guessed... Sprigarito at the beginning of this little section. You would be correct. That is the grass type that I ended up using. Uh, I thought... See, I thought Litten looked good. I didn't really care about Torquette, Torcat, and I hated Incineroar. Uh, I went into this one blind as well. So Gen 8, I did not go in blind. I looked at all of them, and I loved them. Uh, Gen 9, I went into blind. So, Sprigarito was actually the Pokemon that I decided to go with because I liked the little kitty. I liked it. And the moment it evolved and stood up on his hind legs, I was like, oh no. What did they do? So, I went through and looked up all of them. I cannot stand any one of these. Um, Mousquerade is probably the best of the three here. And that's saying something because a lot of people say that it's actually a. Uh, it, it, it's kind of 50-50. Most people think that Fue Coco's line is actually the best in this game. And then the other half think that Quaxley is the best. Uh, I disagree with both of those. I think that the, the grass starter is actually the best. Because the grass dark type actually works decently well together. Again, we've got a, mis a mixed match of physical and... Um, special but there are some decent physical moves for grass types and for dark types as well so i think 
the two combined really work. Though I don't know what the actual stat spread is of uh, Sprigarito and Mousegrade. Meowsegrade. I love that name. That's a great name. I don't like that it stood up. I don't like that they turn it into a, an anthro. I, I absolutely hate that fact. But um, that is the one that I went with. And that's part of the reason why in, in all my... In all my stuff related to Scarlet and Violet, you'll notice that I don't use any one of those starters. I, I can't do it. I just... So, there's Gen 3, I don't like any of them. Gen 4, uh, Gen 5, I don't like any of them. Gen 7, I don't like any of them. Gen 9, I don't like any of them. So, are you seeing a pattern here? Ever since Gen 3, it's been on and off and on and off. So... Each, every other generation that is even, uh, I actually do enjoy. But the odd number ones, except for Gen 1, I can't stand. So, and, and it's not, it's, it, it's again, it's not got anything to do with their move pools or their stat spreads. I prefer looking at Pokemon being like, that's a cool looking Pokemon or that's a ridiculous looking Pokemon. I think Gen 3 is probably the most ridiculous looking of all of them. However, Gen 7 is the dumbest and most retarded looking set in the entire game. Uh, which is closely tied with Gen 9. Like, I can't stand Gen 9 starters. And it even goes, goes as far as a lot of the... I've got the decks pretty well filled out, even though we haven't started this playthrough yet so that's kind of an accomplishment just through uh, uh, s surprise trading but some of the new Pokemon that they introduced for Gen 9 like what is this this little guy what what is this it's a little bear that okay it gets a little bit bigger okay okay it gets a little bit bigger and then oh it gets a little bit bigger again this is the laziest design in all of Pokemon like this is pathetic you you gave it a three stage evolution and it doesn't even change that much. Like it goes from you know being on four all fours like a furry to being an anthro. And then it just it gets a little bit bigger. I I can't stand it. That looks ridiculous. Now there's some pretty bad Pokemon. Don't get me wrong on that. But this game doesn't introduce any well, no, it introduces three that I actually do like. And that's it. Only three. Um, here we go. The the Tandem Mouse. Why? I mean, I get it with Pokemon like uh, um, Doug Trio. Where it looks like it's three Pokemon. And definitely the anime kind of enforces that. It, that it is three separate Pokemon. Just basically living together. But the Tandem Mouse and Mouse Hold. They don't even look like they're connected. So how is this one Pokemon that evolves into one Pokemon? There are four critters there. And if you get lucky enough to get a three family mouse hold, like this is the dumbest thing that I've ever seen them do. And again, even the look of this Pokemon is pathetic. It's like they didn't even try to design something that looks good. You just, this looks like a, a pair of stuffed animals that now you've added two more stuffed animals to. Like, it's it's terrible. And the, the Fido and Dushbun, I, I, I mean, I get it. It's a fire type. It's dough. It just, why? Why are we making Pokemon that look like food? We've got so many of those and I can't stand any of them. Now, I do know that uh, Pirate Software said the only reason that something would look like food is so that you eat it, and the only reason it would want to be eaten is that it is a parasite. So, I get that, but still, it just, I don't like any of the food Pokemon. This thing is retarded. It's its based on Minecraft, like, they're, they're trying to show homage to Minecraft, but... I mean, why? Could you not come up with something unique? 
you had to make something based on Minecraft. Has this got something to do with uh, Pixelmon? I don't know. Or maybe even Cobblemon. I haven't tried Cobblemon. Let's go through here. Uh, Annihilate. This is one that I don't fully understand why they decided to give a Pokemon an old Pokemon, like a Gen 1 Pokemon. I don't understand why they decided to give it a third evolution. And basically this evolution, again, it's not unique. This is basically uh, Ultra Instinct Goku. That's what this is. It's, it's not. I'm not impressed with it. This is literally just Ultra Instinct Goku. I, why they gave it the ghost type, uh, I guess it's got something to do with why it dies and everything. Um, I don't have that one. But Cruelage. So Cruelage and Armorage are two of the three that I think are absolutely amazing. I love this Pokemon. I love its motif and everything. And I like its counterpart. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have its counterpart. But that is probably... My, uh, of those of the three Pokemon that I do like from this, this is my favorite one. Like from Gen Nine, this is my favorite Pokemon. I absolutely love this thing, and I was using it in my uh, Violet playthrough, and it is awesome. I love it. It is a great Pokemon. Uh, the Electric Bird. Yeah, it's an electric bird. I I guess I see it because we've got we've got a a water bird. We've got a fire bird. I guess we need an electric. Uh, I don't understand why we don't have a grass bird if they're trying to do that. Uh, and this is eh, it's it's all right. I don't really care about it. I haven't even bothered using it. Uh, Dunsparce did not need an evolution. I don't know why everybody was like, oh, give Dunsparce an evolution. And he's a no. The Dunsparce is absolutely ridiculous. Toxtricity from uh, Gen 8 is amazing. I love that Pokemon too. Um, this little guy, this is a Gen 9. Why? Why? This, this, this one looks like they, they were working on a design for a new Pokemon and just stopped. Like, they didn't finish it. They didn't finish what they were going to do. And then somebody was like, oh, let's just go ahead and add it. Uh, this thing just looks like an unfinished Pokemon that somehow became a finished Pokemon. That It doesn't make any sense to me. The new Tauros line, like... I mean, I get it. They're doing the regional variants. And... That's a really cool thing that they're adding. But I don't understand why they did this. Especially when you got three variations. You've got just the regular Black Bull. Which it may also be like a nod to um, uh, Black Clover. Because that the group of heroes in that is the, the Black Bulls. Um, so you got, you got the regular one. Then you got the fire one. And then you got a water type. Uh... I, I don't understand why they did that. That is, it seems to me like a ridiculous idea. And the only thing I can come up with is that they were like, "Hey, let's make a nod to uh, Black Clover. We'll we'll have a Pokemon that is a Black Bull." That's the only thing I can think of there. Otherwise, it's just it's retarded. This is an ST again. I don't really care about Pokemon that are based on food. I don't really care about that or its evolution. The Bramble. Like, really? You, you had to make this thing? How is this even a Pokemon? Like, why does it exist? And, and the evolution method for it is one of the more painful ones. Toad school, I, diversion evolutions, I don't get it. It's just, it's a mushroom version of a tentacruel. I don't really care. It's ridiculous. Again, it's lazy design. They just took something and modified it to be something else. 
claw a giant crab Pokemon. I I mean, we, we technically have two giant crabs already, though one of them is not actually a crab. It's actually more of a shrimp. I don't know why we need another one that is kind of like the, the coconut crabs. And it's not even proportioned, right, to be a coconut crab. The pincers should be much bigger. Uh, this thing, it, it's, uh, again, it's just, it's lazy design. I don't think they did anything special with it. It's just a crab. There's nothing interesting about it. It's not like, oh, the thing that has the big giant dirt on its back. Um, the, the beetle. I don't know how they could mess up a beetle. It's like, I don't have its first evolution. But this thing is just, it, it's its not impressive. It's, it's kind of pathetic is what it is. It doesn't look good. Oh, and this, like, come on. What is it? And why is this its pre-evolution? How does this turn into that? Make it make sense to me, because this doesn't make any sort of sense. Unless you've got, like, a little, a little princess that grows up to be a... It's not even a, 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 an older princess. This is actually more like a prince look. I, I don't, it, do, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't look good. It looks bad. They didn't introduce a new dragon in this one either. Um, Tinkaton. This is probably the weirdest Pokemon they have made in the entire franchise. I, 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 I fail to understand how this is a Pokemon. What about the Screams Pokemon? If anything, this little thing screams that it's a Digimon to me more than a Pokemon. And the the, the concept that it's got a mallet, I don't get. And then, then there's the shiny version of this. If you've seen the shiny version of it, the Pokemon doesn't change. The shiny is the mallet. The mallet turns to a rust color. Why? The Game Freak. Pokemon Company, explain this to me because this is horrid. I know we got Pokemon to hatch and everything. We're getting off on a tangent. Yeah, Wiglet and Wigtrio. Again, a divergent Pokemon. It's just it's just Diglett and and Dugtrio. I I <laughs> it's like what? This again is just lazy design. This lazy design is pitiful design. I don't really care about the stork. The stork is kind of bare bones basic. It's just stupid. Um, the dolphin, I, I'm, I'm fine with the dolphin. We, we definitely needed a dolphin. I'm fine with it. I don't think it looks that great. I think they probably could have done a little bit better job, but it works. Um, and its evolution is the one evolution in the entire series right now that is annoying the heck out of me. Because you cannot get this on your own. You have to have another player with you. Uh, there, there are ways to get some of the trade evolutions on your own. If you've got two systems and two copies of the games, you can trade them and get them. This, no. You absolutely have to have another player. And that's why I don't have it. I don't have it on my Scarlet playthrough either. Uh, Violet. Um, earthworms, Silazar. Let's talk about these things here. So we got an engine, a vehicle engine that somehow became a Pokemon. Okay, this they've taken the whole uh, human creation turns into a Pokemon way too far with this. This is just. This is going too far with man-made things becoming Pokemon. Um, I don't like the idea of Varum and Revroom at all. Uh, the idea of it being a poison steel, eh, okay, like whatever, I get it. You're trying to say that. And this is another thing that just po points back to the wokeism that is present in Scarlet and Violet. Uh, they're basically saying that vehicles are poisonous, which you know, I'm not going to argue that they aren't. 
but they're they're trying to reinforce that whole idea right there which is hilarious to me that they would uh go out of their way to try and blast elon musk over the tesla they're they, they want us to get move away from those vehicles from regular gas-powered vehicles and move on to electric and that yet they're going to blast the biggest name in electric vehicles yeah. Don't even get me started on that. Um, Silazar is... Okay, so I know I, I said that Tinkaton is, like, the worst Pokemon they designed in there. This thing just doesn't even make sense. And it gets even worse when you realize that this and the supposedly legendary Pokemon are the same creature. I, I don't understand why there's no way of evolving them. Why can't this just straight up evolve into the other, into the legendary? That makes zero sense. Uh, earthworm. They they had to make an earthworm as way too big. It is way too big. File links. I, this. I know this is a Gen Eight Pokemon, but this is probably the worst Pokemon out there. Like it's dumb. Oh, yeah, then you got this thing. I'm not even sure what this thing is supposed to be. Like, a flower? An ancient flower or something? The Gravehound. I mean, you you can definitely... I definitely get a sense that they are trying to make more dog Pokemon. Because we've gotten two in this one, this one generation. We've gotten two new dog-looking Pokemon. Uh, typically, they only add about one per generation and that kind of builds up how many dog types we have but they've added two in this we got Fido and then we got Graveyard Grave Ard um, I, I don't think it looks that great I, the, the tombstone on top of its head is just dumb like it looks ridiculous and I know that one of the creators was talking about if uh, he had said that if a Pokemon looks too cool he'll do something dumb to it to make it look less cool which is why we've got glade with ridiculous looking hips um i wish they would stop doing that like if you're gonna make something that looks cool or looks goofy straight up make it look cool or look goofy don't make something that looks cool that adds some kind of goofy thing to it it looks it looks retarded it looks like the designers don't know what they're doing is what it looks like it makes them look pathetic I've never never was a fan of this guy or this one. I know those are not Gen 9, which actually, no, you're Gen 8, I believe. I don't like either one of those. I'm trying to just point out Gen 9 stuff. It just looks ridiculous. Flamingo's retarded. I'm not even going to look at it. It's, just, it's a flamingo. It doesn't even have an evolution. This thing... I don't know what they were thinking with this. This one, instead of looking like a really interesting design, it looks like... The, it, it doesn't even look like somebody designed it. It looks like somebody's kid was trying to draw a whale, and they decided to make it a Pokemon. That's what this looks like. Uh, I, that, and that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, King Gambit is... I, I don't understand why they had to make it a Shogun. It just, it's just like whatever. Um, these two. Like a piece of sushi is a Pokemon. I mean, I don't even want to talk about. It. Then we've got the, then we got all of these guys, which I'm still missing two of these, but until we actually get through the playthrough, uh, we're, we're going to be missing those for a while. I don't like these guys at all, except for, like, one of them. And that is because this is an already existing Pokemon that they decided to take and alter it to make it look like it went into, it evolved in the past or it went to the future and evolved. But the problem is that those Pokemon wouldn't have altered in this way. It, 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 that's not how... That's just not how evolution works. It's, it, they look ridiculous. 
And Fluttermane is considered to be the best Pokemon from this generation, I believe. It is absolutely the best Pokemon from this generation. Um, again, with the mushroom thing, it just doesn't look good. Now, I'm on the opposite end of most people. Most people think that these are the good ones, and they don't like the, the future Pokemon. I think the future Pokemon look good. They just don't make any sense. Um, they've been digitized and everything. Yeah, sure. Uh, but in some cases, why were they digitized? If they're supposed to be upgrades, why are there certain things that don't look right? Like, for instance, uh, Iron Treads. Why is the trunk in front of his eyes? He literally can't see where he's going unless he lifts up his trunk. So why is the trunk curled in front of him? So he can't see. That doesn't make any sense. Um, Iron Bundle. The, the the bundle's not part of the Pokemon. The bundle is an item that the Pokemon carries around. Why is it suddenly part of the Pokemon? I don't get that. Uh, Iron Hands, I could see this. I don't care what the... Uh, what the dex entry says. That is... If I can say it right. Hashiramas? Hash, Hashi... Whatever. That is that Pokemon through and through. There's no doubt in my mind that it's that. Um, Iron Jungles, this is probably the strangest one of the bunch. I haven't actually used it. It's a Dark Flying, so it it lost its Dragon typing, but it kept its Dark typing. And for whatever reason, they gave it Flying. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why. It, it, it doesn't look bad but it doesn't look good either it's kind of retarded in a way iron moth i absolutely hate that stupid moth i am tired of people talking about how good it is it is the dumbest little pokemon out there um iron thorns i actually tried to use this guy because it is rock electric um it's not very viable uh, it 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 looks all right, but it's not that usable. Uh, Baxcalibur, I haven't used this guy yet. Uh, it's a little, it's yet another Pokemon that's supposed to imitate Godzilla. And I think this one is probably the best of the three that they made that are based on Godzilla. So if you don't know, we do have Mech Godzilla. Uh, we have the original Godzilla, and then we have this one, which is probably the most accurate-looking Godzilla-type Pokemon. Uh, my my only thing is, why is it so small? Like, it's not big at any by any means. Um, Gimme Ghoul, this I the the only thing I can say about this is they were trying to give the game some some meat something to do that would last the entire game and all it is is it's just fluff it's bs that they put in there just to give you something to do so basically the game is so boring they had to give you a boring task for you to do is basically what this thing is and it evolves into this this is like this is like something you would find in, like, Fortnite or something, where you've got a skin, and, uh, yeah, this is the base level skin, and then spend $10 to get the, the full version, get the nice one. That's basically what this is. Um, that, to me, is not the most annoying evolution in the entire series. It is the most... It's the one that I question the most. I question this more than I do any of the others. I'm like, why? What was the point of making me hunt for 999 coins for this? And as Mikey from M&J Plays found out, he, he wanted to use this in his playthrough, but then he realized that, oh, I can't do that because I can't simply evolve this. I have to go through and collect all these coins. And there's no way for me to get all those coins except for to physically collect them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the legendaries and we still got a couple more. I, I don't here's I don't know why the Yes, I just put my hand in front of the camera. I don't know why the past, the paradox pokemon from the past and the future are split up there 
and then you've got two more over here that is splitting up all of the legendaries. So not only is some of the designs of the Pokemon pathetic, not only is the design of the world pathetic, but the way that they set up the Pokedex is incorrect because you've got this guy here, this this dragon type that they introduced, way up here past the Paradox Pokemon. Then you've got two Paradox Pokemon that are in the middle of all the legendaries. Not to mention this stupid thing. Could they not have organized this a little bit better? Could they not have rearranged it? All right, so let's talk about the, the legendaries. Um, Wu Chen, I, there's people out there that talk about viability of them in competitive or using them in your own playthrough. I don't really care. In my opinion, for like for throughout the entire franchise, you never should have been able to catch and use legendaries in the story. Um, I don't like this thing. It does have an interesting motif to it. It does remind me of uh, Madam Trash Heap from uh, the Fred, the Fraggles, Fraggle Rock. So I do think that is an interesting design. Don't really care. Never going to use it. Um, Chin Pao. I, so I like this thing and I don't like this thing. I think the, the actual body of it is interesting. It's the tusk that throw me off. Because the tusks are clearly not part of its body. This is like a spear or something that has been broken in half and then jammed up inside of its gums. Uh, the tusks just don't look right to me. Or maybe this was like an ice sculpture and they jammed those up into its jawline. So it just... I'm not a big fan of how that looks. Um, of the legendaries, though, this is my favorite. I think it looks amazing. Ting Lao, I don't know why they had to make a legendary moose. I feel like we had a few of them in the past that probably could have filled this role as well. Now, granted, most of those are deers, but why they had to make a legendary moose, I don't know. It just, it doesn't even look that good. Like, it looks pathetic. Like, no, they didn't spend any time actually designing the thing. Chin Yu, um, um, okay, it's a goldfish. Okay, yep, yep, that's where we're staying at. Uh, and then on to more Paradox Pokemon. Roaring Moon, it's just legend. It's just um, Mega Salamance. Uh, whoop de doo I don't really care. I don't think it looks that good. I don't know why a dragon suddenly has feathers. This, I don't think it has the Dragon Typhoon, does it? Yeah, Dragon Dark. So, why does the dragon have feathers? Uh, I, I I don't understand that. It just it looks terrible. Uh, Iron Valiant. This is number three. I absolutely love Iron Valiant. I think it looks amazing. Um, it is a steel fight or fairy fighting, which is an interesting combo. I did try to use this, but it never felt good. It it always felt kind of weak in my opinion. Um, it is. It is one of my favorites from Gen 9. As I said, there's only three. You got Cruelage, Armorage, and uh, Iron Valiant. Uh, Cruelage is definitely my, my favorite, but this guy, I wanted to use this one in a playthrough. And same as Mikey, I realized that the there was no way I was going to do that in a playthrough because this thing, you don't even go to Area Zero until the post-game. So all of the... Paradox Pokemon, you cannot use any playthrough because you can't get access to them until the post game. Um, and then the two legendaries. These are the worst legendaries in all of poke <clears throat> in all of Pokemon. Let me explain because I do know that Maridon has found use in competitive. That's competitive. That's a whole different world. They go by different rules and everything and they they base pokemon's viability off of its stats and its move pool 
I don't care about either one of those. I care about what I'm looking at as far as the Pokemon is concerned. The, again, this is this is for Pokemon because I know how that sounds. Trust me, I just realized how that sounds. Um, th- th- that th- let's just move past that. Um, my problem with these is, like I was saying with Silazar, is that these guys evolve into that based on if they went to the past or they went to the future. Uh, Maridon is the one that you get for the Pokemon going into the future, and the other one. Coridon is the one that goes to the past. Well, here's the problem. First off, that means it's not a legendary because it's simply an evolution of a Pokemon. Legendaries usually don't evolve ever. Um, so yeah, legendaries don't evolve. And my other problem is the number of them. Uh, this is something that Mikey talked about a long time ago. And I kind of agree with it that a legendary Pokemon, if it's a legendary, there should only ever be one. Let me say that again. If it's a legendary, there should only ever be one. Now, you may think with these two that there's only one. No. No, 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 no. Because of how this evolution works, all you got to do is shove like a whole bunch of Silazars in through the portal, and then you got a whole bunch of these things. And in fact, Gameplay-wise, there are three of these. Get my hand to turn right. There are three of these within the game. So you've got the one that you are riding around on. So, yeah, the one we're riding around on right now. you got the one that the professor is riding, or, uh, battling with. And remind, let me remind you, that's not even the professor. Um, but you got the one that the professor has, and then after you defeat the professor and you go back down to the zero, area zero, there is a third one there that you can capture for battling. So there are three of these guys walking around. And then again, all you got to do is shove a whole bunch of Silazars through the portal and voila, you got another one. Or you got 30, or you got 40. That is not a legendary. I don't even like these two legendaries. Maridon kind of works for me. Uh, it makes sense because it's mechanical and everything, and it's basically a transformer. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, first off, why has it got the bike? Why has it got the wheels there? Um, look, it is running around on all four. It doesn't need the wheels. This is just poor design work on the Pokemon company themselves. This is of all of Pokemon this right here to me is the most horrendous looking Pokemon in all of the franchise. It is retarded. I don't understand why this thing has wheels if it's running around on its feet. The other thing I don't understand is this back tail. If I go off somewhere which I'm not going to do it. You can go do this yourself in your own game if you're playing Scarlet. Um, go and set up a picnic and then look at it when it walks around. You will notice two things. First and foremost, that front tire is deflated. It's not inflated the entire time. It is flat against its chest. The other thing you'll notice is the back wheel is its tail rolled up. It's tail. Tails are usually... Creatures usually have tails for stability when they're running very fast. It is a method for them controlling their speed and being able to turn and move. That is what... It, at speed, balance, being able to move, it, all that stuff. Um, there's probably a scientific name for it. I don't know what that is. But that is what their tails are for. This stupid thing is running on all fours, and it's got its tail tucked up in a ball. Or not even a ball, into a wheel shape. I, 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 it baffles me on who designed this, because that is horrid. It is the most ridiculous looking thing. And then look at how its legs connect. Do you see where its legs are connecting there? There's barely any 
anything connecting this creature's back legs to its body. Do you see that? Do you see what I'm talking about? There's barely... is barely connected there. This thing is just... There's so many things about this that I've really questioned the design team about. And that is... That is some of the reasons why I, I, I'm not a huge fan of Scarlet and Violet. Um, so that, again, because we need to go back over it, because I'm talking about it again. So the question becomes, why am I doing this playthrough in Scarlet? Uh, first off, I haven't played through Scarlet, so I don't have access to the Scarlet Pokemon for my Violet game. Uh you could get them through trade, but I haven't had any luck with that so far. So the other reason is, throughout all of the Pokemon franchise, there's not one single game where you can go the entire storyline, the entire uh, uh, gym battle system with a predetermined team. There's not one game you can do that in. And it's for various reasons. Now you could you could do that if you just straight up traded yourself a bunch of Pokemon. I just thought about it and realized that that was the last one to hatch. So you could trade them to your game and then be like, oh okay, now I'm ready to start. Well the problem is they're not truly your Pokemon. And what I mean by that is if we go Where is it at? Where does it say it? Oh, right here. Original trainer. So it says original trainer gives the ID number of the original trainer. And if the ID number does not match your ID number, so we just hatched this EV. That's my ID number. That's my character's name. Uh, so if these do not match, then they are not technically your Pokemon, which means that they can disobey you at any given moment. Now, Scarlet and Violet do things a little bit different uh, when it comes to commanding your Pokemon. Used to be in past games that if it's your Pokemon, if you raise it, it will obey you from level 1 to level 100. Uh, in this game, and uh, uh, traded Pokemon will only obey you up to the badge level that you have. So if I've got uh, the badge level also determines what level that means. So for you're going to have to like forgive me on this. I don't know the exact numbers, but like if you get the first badge, it's up to I think like level 20 that the Pokémon will obey you. You get the second badge, it's up to level 30. Uh the third badge is I think 25 or something, or I think I just said 30, so maybe 40. And then it goes on from there until you get to a point where it's just like all Pokemon. The final badge, all Pokemon obey you regardless of level. So your eighth badge, no Pokemon's going dis to disobey you. In the past games, that was only traded Pokemon. And Pokemon that you catch didn't apply to that. In this game... That's all Pokemon. So even if it's my own Pokemon, if I caught it and it's a higher level than the badge that I have, it has a chance to not obey me. So they changed that mechanic in this game, which I don't fully understand why they did that, other than you have the potential to overlevel majorly in this because you don't have to go to the gym battles. Like, we could... I mean... Right now, this, this character is proof of it because I haven't done anything as far as gems. I always forget which button. So I haven't progressed anything. We're still trying to get our team together and everything. So because this is so open world, you don't have to worry about the rigors of going directly from one place to another. And you can't progress through those areas until you beat certain things. Uh, this does do a little bit of that because there's certain areas without defeating the uh, what are they called? The the Titans. 
Is that not a Titan there? Oh, yeah, it says Titan badge right there. Okay, I'm blind. So without beating the Titans and getting the sandwiches for your your mount, I'm not calling it a legendary, uh, you, you don't have access to certain abilities like gliding, climbing, even your speed, like running your boost. So you got to be able to get those things in order to progress through some of the areas. Again, that is exactly why I don't have the the leaf stone or the ice stone for getting uh, glaceon and leafion. I'll worry about those at a later stage, but the likelihood of me ever using either one of those in this playthrough is non-existent. Uh, though part of this is that I do have to use them at some point. So we will we will be getting Leafeon and Glaceon at some point, and I will have to use them at some point. Though I don't, I'm in no rush to do that because we still got we still got to get our shiny uh, Sylveon. Speaking of which, we we spent way too long talking. I think I've only hatched like ten eggs, <laughs> so we we need to get going on this. This is months and months and months behind where I originally wanted to release this stuff at, so we need to get going with hatching these eggs. I mean, we're an hour and a half into the stream and we've only hatched 10 eggs. <laughs> I, I do apologize for that. I've been ranting for so long, but you know, it's part of the thing of like talking about stuff and like showing things like I don't have a way to just click a button and show you something I have to go look at it or pull it up or something and I don't have every aspect of Pokemon memorized I, I wouldn't call myself a casual gamer either I mean you saw my Pokedex it's pretty full I don't have it fully completed because most of that was surprise trades so I've, I've gotten that far just on surprise trading, so I have done a lot. My Violet playthrough is on that same level. The Really, the only things that I'm missing are the, the Pokemon that I can only get in Scarlet. I haven't seen very many people trading those across. And so... I need to get the I need to get the paradox Pokemon from this game and the legendary from this game and send it over to my violet and that leaves one other Pokemon for me to get and that is I need the dolphin I need the dolphins evolution and the only way I can get that is if I connect with somebody and we I think all I've got to do is once I'm connected, I just got to level it up till it evolves. I think that's literally all I've got to do. But the problem is, I've got to be able to connect to somebody. Without making that connection work, I just, it, we're never going to get that evolution. I'm kind of glad to be back doing this again because I haven't done this in forever. It's this is probably of the things that I've wanted to stream. Uh, Pokemon is probably the most relaxing one to me. Like I, I never find it frustrating. It doesn't aggravate me, except for like the bad designs. <laughs> uh, that does aggravate me, but I just tend to stay away from those Pokemon and stay away from those games. So one of the things I would like to do eventually is I do have. Uh, diamond and pearl. I have both uh, shining, uh, brilliant diamond and shining pearl. I have both of them. Uh, eventually, I would like to play through those on stream as well. I do want to dedicate Tuesdays to everything Pokemon. Uh, one of the other things is that I do need to finish uh, Arceus. Legends Arceus. I never did finish that. Um, I, I, I rather enjoyed Arceus. It just... Arceus gameplay loop and how things work in that got very boring very quickly. 
So the thing about filling out the Pokedex in that one is you have to catch so many Pokemon in order to unlock the the information and the the Pokedex in that one. And catching like thirty thousand uh woo bats. Woo bats? Yeah, we'll just go with that. I, I've just, it gets so boring so quick, because all I'm doing is sitting there hunting the same creature over and over again. And then you've got, like, the rare spawns and everything, which is fine, and I, I think that it does need that. I'm just not a big fan of it. That is just something that I would rather not have. But, at the same time, gameplay ways, game play wise i think that it should have rare spawns there should be certain pokemon that are rarer than others i don't like dealing with that but i think that that is something that should be done i don't think that that exists in this game though i don't think there's any because it's all weather and sandwich based i don't think there's any that are actually like rare in this I mean, there are and there are not. So, like, when you get out to Blueberry Academy trying to get the the starter evolutions, they are kind of they are kind of rare to find. And even one of them is a giant pain in the butt. That's Cyndaquil, because there's only one spot in the entire map that Cyndaquil will spawn. It took me forever to get Cyndaquil. And forget shiny hunting. Um, that is one thing I want to make perfectly clear. I am not a shiny hunter. I do want to get to the point where I could do shiny hunter hunting. But I am not a shiny hunter. I want to make that clear. There's a big difference between me just doing regular playthroughs with uh, whatever team I'm deciding. Versus doing a shiny hunt. Uh, I'm not going to spend hours and hours and hours looking at one Pokemon for a shiny, which is ironic considering what we're doing right now. We're we're trying to shat. We're trying to hatch a a shiny uh, Eevee for a shiny Sylveon using the Masuda method. Uh, really, the reason we're doing that is that's the only way we can, without completing the Pokedex. Ooh, excuse me. And then going to the one area on the map where Eevees spawn, uh, we're we're not going to be able to get a shiny that easily, which is why which is part of the reason why this uh, this playthrough of Team Eevee is taking months to start. Uh, I thought this was going to be a lot easier way back when I said, "Hey, I'm going to do a Team Eevee playthrough." Watch my channel for it. And here we are in November, almost a full year from when I said we were going to do this. And we still don't have a a shiny uh, Eevee for a shiny Sylveon. We're, we're, one, we're one shiny away from being able to st start this. And all I needed was three. Three. Now, I've I want to add on a fact here. So, yes, we haven't been very good about uh, streaming this the last two, three months. Things have been kind of crazy. Uh, back when I first made that announcement, we were, we were streaming it and we were uh, hatching eggs constantly. But after, like, a month and a half, I was like, why am I not seeing any shinies? I've hatched over a thousand eggs and haven't gotten a one. And that's when I realized that something about the data for the for the ditto I was using to breed Eevees had changed. It was no longer from Japan. It now said it was from it was now a uh, an English Pokemon. It wasn't a Japanese Pokemon anymore. I was like, wait, what? That explains why that's not working, but when did that happen? So then I went in and I grabbed another Pokemon, another Ditto, 
brought it over, exactly the same thing happened. It was no longer, I think it was a French one that I brought over, and I was using it for a while. Then I looked at it again, I was like, wait a minute, this says it's English now. So there was something about transferring uh, dittos from my sword data, Pokemon Sword, to Pokemon Scarlet, where it was changing the 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 country of origin for for whatever reason. I, I can't explain it, but the first one I had was originally from Japan. It said that in my sword decks that it was from Japan. So I sent it over here specifically to breed. And then when I realized that it was no longer from Japan, it now had English on it. I was like, uh, okay. So I sent over one that was French, bred it for a little while, and then looked at it. And I was like, wait, this is it's from English again. So what I ended up having to do is uh, just go through some, uh, some surprise trades here until I got one that was in a different language, was from a different region. So that was probably the weirdest probably the weirdest thing I've seen. It just dawned on me that I need to check and see. And sure enough. See I lost I lost count earlier. I should have realized that that was we had hatched five already. That and trying to talk to like with n with nobody here to chat to. It's kind of like, well, of course I'm going to lose count because I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing in order to just, you know, chat. But at the same time, I don't understand why this is acting like it's... It's like cutting in and out. And that's why it looks choppy. Uh, you, can, you could probably, if I stay quiet for a few minutes, you could probably hear it in the sound. Do you hear it? See how it's like sputtering? Like it's cutting in and out? That's what the video is doing as well. I tried resetting it and I tried uh, I tried changing some of the sounds in OBS. It's neither one of those. As far as I can tell, this is coming from the game itself. It's not even from the Switch. It's from the game. The game itself is doing that. So the, it, it's causing it to, like, stutter for some reason. I don't know why it's stuttering. That is, like, the strangest thing that I've ever seen. And it only does it when it's plugged into the capture card. Like, I... I I took it uh, off the the stand earlier when I was trying to troubleshoot the issue, and it, I was like, "Now wait a minute, the it's working fine when it's not plugged in." And then the other thing that I noticed, and the reason I say that it's the game itself, is when I would go to the main menu, I realized that the main menu and everything there is working fine. I'm not having any kind of stuttering, like the video's not stuttering, the sound isn't stuttering, until I go into the game. And just out of curiosity, I went into one of my other games, and same thing. It just suddenly, it, whatever for whatever reason, the games themselves are causing the, the stuttering. So I don't know what's going on with my Switch. I would like to use my other one, I do have a secondary Switch. But it doesn't have the data on there that this one does, and uh, it's a switch light, so it's not going to plug into the stand, unfortunately. I did purchase a stand for it, but that stand does not actually work for uh, for plugging it into a TV or anything, so I can't plug it into the capture card, unfortunately. So my secondary switch I can't use for for um, streaming at all at the moment.
I'm sure there's probably a way I could, but so far I haven't seen a a docking bay for the Switch Lite that would allow me to plug in the capture card. Which is a shame because I've got some other games for my Switch that I would like to do on stream eventually. Well, I, I did go out and grab uh, the Switch version of Star Ocean Second Story. I absolutely love that game. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't started it yet. But we get we got too much to do as far as what we are trying to accomplish with our channel and everything. But there are some that are going to be like one-time playthroughs. Like, for instance, Alien Isolation. When we finally finish Alien Isolation, I imagine we probably won't ever do that again. Uh... Van, uh, v Rising, I imagine, is the same kind of deal. One time is going to be enough through that. Uh, games like Imperion, uh, Minecraft, and Seven Days to Die, we could play those for all eternity because they don't end. There's no story to work through there that ends. Uh, Imperion technically does have a story, but I don't even care about it. Much to the dismay of the creators, I don't care about that. <laughs> And we do have some other things that I would, would like to do on stream. Oops. So eventually we will get to a point where we can do some of those others. Like I do have... I also have uh, Hogwarts. I've been wanting to play that for like forever. I did buy it for PC, but my PC is completely incapable of playing it. It will not run on my PC. The game instantly crashes anytime I try to start it. So I can't do that one, unfortunately. Uh, we also have... Uh, what, what do I have? I have all of the Pokemon games for Switch. So I have Scarlet and Violet. I have Sword and Shield. I have Diamond and Pearl. And I have Legends Arceus, which we are waiting for ZA. ZA is still on its way. Hopefully I will find work before it comes out. That way I can get that one. Though we do have way too many Pokemon games that we need to finish right now because we still haven't finished them. And then I have Hogwarts. I have Digimon Digital Sleuth. I have yet to finish that game. Though I just... That one... That one is a little bit, like, I enjoyed it for a time, but then I just kind of got sick of it. It really wasn't, it, it, the, the evolutions in Digimon doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So, they're, if you're not familiar with Digimon, it's kind of the same concept where they will evolve into stronger and stronger forms. Now, in the anime, they always go back to one of their earlier stages. In the games, they always stay at that stage. And it works more like an old school RPG like Final Fantasy where you've got a set team. So in that Digimon game, you have a team of three. So you can only ever have three Digimon on your team. Um... I don't remember what all I had on my team. I I know I had I think it's like Paladin Mon or something. It's the combination of Agumon and whatever the dog's name is. I can't think of the dog's name. But it's a combination of those two. And then I had the the little rose thing. Um, it, it, it's uh, second stage is like a cactus. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, I had that one on my team, and then another. There's another plant-based one. I had the other plant-based one on my team as well. But rose one, I think, is that one, and then the other one. I don't remember what the name of it is. But um, yeah, the the way evolutions work in that is really really weird so 
imagine if you had like a Charmander that you could evolve into Blaziken, Cyndaquil, uh, sorry, not Cyndaquil, but uh, Typhlosion, Infernape, or uh, Cinderace. It can, it can evolve into any one of those. Uh, and then you could devolve. Let's say let's say you go and you evolve it into Cinderace. Well, then you could take it and you could devolve it. And instead of devolving it back to Charmander, I have now devolved it back to. Uh, let's just go with Sprigorito. I've devolved it back into Sprigorito. So now that it's Sprigorito, I can go into those same uh, final evolutions or I could go into other ones. So that game, the Digimon universe and the way their evolutions work, it is absolutely bizarre. Like, I kid you not, the, the, there's some weirdness with their evolutions. Like, I took an, uh, I think it was an Agamon, which can evolve into War Greymon. And because of the chain of evolutions you can go through, I actually ended up turning it into a, uh, a Godomon. And then I took that Godomon and I turned it into a, a black Godomon. Um, yeah, it's so, it's so weird and all over the place. And then the combo evolutions where you take two Digimon and evolve it into one, I don't like how that works because when you devolve them, you only get one of the two back. So you got to go and catch more of the other one, and it's not going to have access to all those evolutions until you evolve it a few times. So it's it's so it's such a weird system of interconnected evolutions, and not everything has the same interconnected evolutions, and some of them have divergent evolutions, but in some cases, if you follow the weird chain of evolutions, you can transform it into a completely different creature. Even though it started off as an Agumon, now you've suddenly got a Gatomon. It, it, it's so weird. And if there's any Digimon fans out there that have watched this Pokemon stream all the way to this point, uh, leave some more information down below for others because I'm sure that probably confused people and just it's such a weird evolution tree and if you're curious about it uh, go out there and look at their evolution trees it is so bizarre it is the strangest system I have ever seen in a game and I've played some pretty weird games in my time It, it's even even some of the things that it has to, that you have to do. Like there are some evolutions that I cannot access because you need certain specific items. It's like stone evolutions or item evolutions here in Pokemon. You you need those in order to achieve those evolutions. And I'm assuming if you devolve them, you lose that evolution item. I, I'm assuming that's how that's going to work. But yeah, I've got that. I haven't finished it yet. And I haven't even played the sequel. So the, the version of that that I bought came with uh, uh, Digital Sleuth and then Digital Sleuth uh, Chain of Memories or Forgotten Memories or whatever. So it's two, it's two games in one. Chain of Memories, that's Kingdom Hearts. But yeah, there's there's two games for that. And I have both of them. The uh, the character customization on that is actually pretty pretty good. It's very basic, but it's it's good. It works. I like it. It's not like this garbage where I can't even change the color of my outfit. Heck, I can't even actually change my outfit except for the uh, There it is. So I can pick these. But I don't even like the school outfits in this. This this was the biggest disappointment to me. I don't like this at all. 
I've, I've really missed all the other games where you got full customization of your character. This, to me, is retarded. The fact that it's not labeled boy or girl is retarded. We're just going to leave it on that, because I, I don't like any of the outfits you have access to in this game. I wish they hadn't have done that. What really aggravates me with the costumes in this is this is a female character. And in, I've looked around the world at schools that have actual dress codes. I can't find a single one that the girl's uniform isn't either a full-on dress or a skirt. Like a, a blouse and a skirt outfit. There's not one that I have found that the girls are required to wear pants or shorts. It's either a dress or it's a blouse and skirts. Not one of them is it like this ridiculous looking stuff. And again, if you don't believe me on how woke Scarlet and Violet are, like really look into it. Start looking at the games and realizing what some of the symbology is and seeing all the different things that are in it. Even, like, even looking around town here, one of the things that I picked up on is all of the females are bigger than the men. The men are usually really scrawny, like that guy right there. Now, you do have guys like this. So, basically, there's two types of guys in this game. You got really scrawny or fat. That's it. And not even like a little fat. I'm talking like really fat. And the females, there's only two types of females. You got really skinny or you got butch. There you go, butch. Actually, this, this is a better one right here. Extremely butch. Like it's it's disgusting. There's no really cool NPCs in this one either. And it gets even worse if you start looking at the actual named characters. Cause I swear I will die on this hill that Penny is a dude in drag. I don't think I can pull up Penny in this. It's not like some of the others where you could Potentially, no, actually I can't think of any of them that you could do that. I'm thinking of the, like, the ability to call the characters that they introduced a while back. I don't think they have that in this one. Yeah, I know for sure they don't have that. You've only got your Pokedex and everything. You don't have any way of contacting your rival or just knowing where you can find your rivals. And a lot of the other ones, you, there are static encounters with your rivals. This one doesn't have any of that. You do, and what I mean what I mean by that is it's not a battle. It's a static encounter. Like, they're just standing somewhere, and you can go and talk to them. And this one, um, oh, we're, we don't have any hatching anymore. Like, there's nowhere on the map that I could just go and, oh, there's Penny. Uh, there's nowhere on the map I can go and there's Naomi. Some of the other ones you could do that with uh, their rivals. Don't ask me where exactly because I don't remember. You're talking 30 years of Pokemon. That's a lot of stuff to try and remember. And I am not the best at memori memorizing things. I'm horrible at mem memorizing things actually. The only way I memorize something is if I use that knowledge over and over and over again. That's why there's certain Pokemon that I will never forget their names, because I always talk about them. And then there's others I'm just like, oh, what is your name? I've got I've got to look it up. Or, like in the case of me looking at the, the Pokedex earlier, like because the name is right there, I don't have to remember what it is. Or, it's like, well, that's still kind of the whole using it all the time, but there are Pokemon that are so common 
you see them a lot that I've been able to be like, oh, okay, that's this guy because it's everywhere. Like Pachirisu. Uh, Pachirisu is everywhere. That was one of... Dawn's Pokemon? I think it was either Dawn or it was May who had a Pachirisu. I don't really remember. I wasn't... I didn't watch a whole lot of the anime. I did when it first started off, so all the way through uh, the Orange League. I watched all the way through the Orange League, so I've seen all of that. And then once it gets to Johto, I don't think I watched very much of Johto. But then from there on out, I didn't watch hardly any of it. So I'm not familiar with all of the characters and what uh, Pokemon they had. I do know a little bit. Like, for instance, I know May had Torchic, Dawn had Piplup. Serena, I think. What did Serena have? Was Serena starter Finnegan? Or did she have a traditional starter? She may have been one of the ones that didn't have a traditional starter. Because not all of them have a starter. Like Misty. Misty didn't have a Squirtle. Misty had Star You, Star Me, and Psyduck. Now she does get Magikarp later on, and that does become her Mega Evolution Pokemon, but she doesn't have a traditional starter. Brock doesn't have a traditional starter, but both of them are technically not trainers. They are gym leaders, which is a trainer, but they're, they, they have slightly different rules, like, they have to use specific types of Pokemon. That's the same for, um... Oh, uh, whatever her name is. Dragon Girl. In fact... Thinking about it, you don't see another... Another trainer with a starter until you get to, uh, Sun and Moon. Because the water girl has Puplio. And she's the only other character that has a starter Pokemon. And then Hop. I don't know what Hop has in the anime. No idea what Hop has. And then you go into the New Horizon stuff. And I don't really care about that. I tried to watch it. It just, I don't like Liko. She's such a boring character to me. She was 100% uninteresting. I think I only made it like three or four episodes into that. I was just like, eh, I can't. I can't do this. It's so boring. But she has uh, Sprigorito, and then you got the boy that comes in, which I want to say is supposed to be the same age as Liko. But then you see him standing together, and Liko's like a full head taller than him. Like, what the heck is that? Now, I don't know if they changed that, but in the first few episodes, when you see them standing together, Liko is a full head taller than him. And supposedly they are the same age. They definitely make it look like he is younger than her, though. And he is not. I don't remember what that character's name is either. But then again, like the the her Pokemon Horizon, I didn't really care for. I didn't like the idea that the Pokemon Professor is some kind of adventure and everything. And that's part of that's part of where I started working on my own Pokemon Professor. So, to kind of coincide with this, uh, again, so my Pokemon professor, this is his daughter, uh, the, the female character that I always make. Uh, she's slightly different depending on the game, but it's always a female character named Rachel. So, 
from here on out, it is Rachel Likens. I had been calling her different names, but she is now Rachel Likens. She is my Pokemon professor's daughter. Uh, where is her mother at, you may be asking. Well, in my head canning, the mother died when she was a baby. I think that's pretty common for uh, characters like that. So, what? Uh, a little more detail on that. One of the things that I do with this character in my head is not only is he a, pro a Pokemon professor, but he is also a drummer in a rock band or a hard rock band or a metal band. And so a couple of things that I, in, in my head can I have uh, I, I don't know their names but there's the Pokemon gym leader that is a poison type that she plays a guitar uh, so in my head canon he's playing drums she's a guest star playing guitar and then you've got uh, like there's another character somewhere that has also kind of got that vibe and then you've got um, the dark type gym leader from sword and shield who is a singer so he's got kind of that so she's got you got her that's doing like acid rock he's doing like punk rock and then you've got my professors doing like uh metal heavy metal and one of the pokemon that he keeps with him is Grokey because Rillaboom is a drummer um, so he's got uh, a Grokey that is with them and hanging out and being helpful and everything, even though I'm more of a fire-type user. But I think Grokey would just be absolutely amazing to be, like, his partner Pokemon. And then, like, maybe he's got a, uh, a Rillaboom with him as well. Like, the Rillaboom, the Grokey is Rillaboom's, uh, kid. Something like that. Some kind of dynamic like that. And then you got my character's daughter, Rachel. She is a growing singer. I think that would be really cool. She's the 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 headcanon I have for her is she looks kind of like Marnie, unfortunately, because that's the whole reason why I do her hair the way that I did it. Where it's like in pigtails and everything. Because I really like the design of Marnie. That is probably one of my favorite Pokemon character designs. Marnie is just absolutely amazing style-wise. Uh, so Rachel's kind of modeled after her a little bit in my head. I haven't quite figured out how to make her look unique without making her seem like a carbon copy. Um, that's that's still something I need to work on. I know in my, in my Pokemon Shield playthrough, I did change her hair. So typically, I've, I've always pictured Rachel with, like, red hair. But in Pokemon Shield, I decided to make her hair brown instead. Because we're, going, we're moving forward with the whole idea that she is my character's daughter. And I don't have... I do have the trait for red hair. But I don't actually have red hair. My beard is kind of red, but it's, it's looking a little more gray these days. <laughs> I, I just seen that down there too. It's looking a lot more gray now. I've I've completely lost the claim that that is red. <laughs> you can see that so clearly. It is grayed out on my chin. And that that does kind of remind me of something I was thinking the other day. And without getting into politics too much. Uh, I was thinking about where I'm at in life and how things have gone and everything and what I've been trying to do for like the last two, three years, like working with YouTube and trying to stream on Twitch and chasing a dream. And then I realized that there's a there's a senator out there who's actually younger than me. I'm like, you got... It was kind of a, a an eye-opening moment where I'm like like what I know things have not exactly gone right for me but I feel like I'm not in a position I would want to be in and I don't see any way out of it the only the only way out of any of this I see is success on Twitch and success on YouTube that's the only way out of any of this I see 
trying to hold down normal jobs has proven it's not like it's difficult for me it's just i get to a point where i'm so angry and arrogant that i just i end up causing myself issues so the thought that i'm going to be able to do that again and just be able to hold a normal job like any other normal person i just i can't see myself doing it i can't i've grown past that like i just it's not gonna happen for me the other so either i make it on all these on streaming and youtube or i'm just stuck the other option is I do have Little Hollywood just down in Georgia, but with the whole age thing, I don't know that I would ever be able to break into Hollywood at all. Like, go on and act in something. Maybe if I had fostered all my writing and creative skills, maybe. That could have gone somewhere, but I was never really in a position where I could work on that kind of stuff. Hi. What are you snorting at? I just realized I don't have... I don't have any eggs. We're running around with nothing. I'm not staying focused on what I'm doing. It just, it suddenly, it dawned on me. I was like, you know, we're not, I'm not seeing any eggs hatch. Did they all hatch already? Go and look. I don't have any eggs. Oh, genius. Again, this is, that, that kind of stuff right there is part of the reason why this, getting this playthrough going and getting it working has taken too long. I do apologize about putting my arm in front of the camera. There's there's nowhere for me to set anything to my right. The only place is to my left. And guess what? That means I have to reach across the camera. <laughs> as far as this playthrough is concerned, this is something that I've wanted to do for a while. It's like any of the other things. Like, I feel like the only way for me to gain attention is to do something specific, like a a team-based playthrough of a game, like we're doing here. This is going to be a EV team-based playthrough. And then once I get working on it and I'm going to the gym battles and everything, we'll have uh, episodes every so often that I'll put out and be like, okay, we're taking on this gym and everything and we're going to get through this. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that in conjunction with streaming because we we would have to be streaming and record the battle at the same time so that's that's a logistical thing i'm gonna have to figure out once we get to that point but unfortunately because of the way this works it's gonna be a one-time encounter so if i don't if I don't record it properly and have a good recording the first time, that could cause issues. So either I'm going to have to stream something else on Tuesdays, or instead of streaming Pokemon on Tuesdays, I'll try and do the recording, and uh, hopefully the recording is good the first time. Again, we do have problems with the sound. i got to figure out what's going on with the sound coming from the Switch. I don't know if it's a capture card. It definitely seemed like it was coming from the games themselves. Which doesn't make any sense, but again, uh, on the main screen for the Switch, the sound is fine. It's not until I get into a game where we start getting that poppy, like, cutting in and out stuff. Another thing I wish I could do is I wish I could work on this background here. I can't even see my fingers, like, pointing up because it cuts them off. But I don't have a green screen. I've got nowhere to put a green screen, so... Yeah, joy, fun. Yeah, 
You know, what's really surprising right now is we usually have at least one person drop by the stream on the, on the early part of the day. But uh, so far, nobody has dropped by, so that's kind of concerning. Um, I know we haven't gotten that far with uh, hatching eggs, but we do need to go and take a break here soon. I need to get the dogs out, I need to get some food in my belly, and uh, come back to it. Continue on with what we were doing. So, we do need to do that here soon. Well, I'm going to wait about seven minutes. I know it's going to put the, the stream time at an odd number, but we are going to go ahead and wait like seven minutes. You know, I just, the other major concern for me is I noticed that nobody, like the last few Pokemon things that I've put up, nobody's watching. And I'm not getting any comments either. Like, I keep asking for people's opinions or, you know, tell me what your favorite thing is, and nobody's, nobody's leaving comments. I mean, that's the way to get engagement, right? with your audience is to ask them about things like leave a comment tell them to leave a comment like what is your favorite Pokemon I would love to see a whole list of people's favorite Pokemon and in fact how about you start a list like a chain that is in alphabetical order like somebody put up like their favorite Pokemon starting with the letter A and then somebody reply to that with B C D E all the way down through the uh, alphabet of what your favorite Pokemon is. Because I'm sure that somebody out there, their favorite Pokemon is Ambipom or some other Pokemon that starts with an A. Same goes for every other letter. Though I do think that not every letter is covered. I don't think there's a Pokemon for every single letter. Uh, we do have Zatu, Zapdos, Nicket, Pommel, yeah, maybe, maybe there is a Pokemon for every single letter, Rayquaza, so yeah, just, you know, leave me a comment down below, what's your favorite Pokemon and why, and if it's because it's just good, go away, <laughs> don't really care, I want to hear exactly why and I, and I don't want to hear because it's strong and competitive like there's a lot of Pokemon that are strong and competitive simply because they're broken I don't care about broken Pokemon I don't care about you know this particular one has the most ridiculous move pull of any of its type I want to hear, like, why you actually like it. Because it's good and uh, competitive isn't a good enough reason. That's more like a cop-out. I like this simply because it's OP. Well, no wonder you like it because, because it's OP. Because it's OP. G give me an actual good reason. Like you have a fond memory of using that Pokemon. Or because somebody gifted you a Pokemon. Speaking of which, this right here, this is one of my absolute favorite Pokemon. Because, because it was gifted to me. This was a gift when Pokemon was a new thing. Can you even make that out? Down here in the bottom left corner. So it's a little keychain of Nitto King. Nitto King to this day is one of my absolute favorite Pokemon. Partly because uh, 
this was gifted to me from a friend back in high school. I have no idea what happened to her. I lost touch with her after high school, but she gifted this to me, and I've had it ever since. And I have kept it in a good spot ever since. The Pokeball that it comes in is a different story. The Pokeball, if I have it somewhere, is all kinds of jacked up. Because I used to keep it... Yeah, I, I don't know where the, where the Pokeball is. No idea. There's no sense of me looking around for it because I, I don't know where I put it. Uh, it is falling apart. So it used to be my... It used to be my... Like, the thing that was hanging off the mirror in my car. So I used to have it in there all the time. Now, because it was hanging in my car and was exposed to sunlight, you know, 24-7, uh, well, not 24 hours a day, but you, you get what I mean. Because it's out and exposed to sunlight so often, uh, it wore out the plastic. Like, the plastic became brittle, and uh, the, the top portion of it kind of broke. Um, it doesn't help that what I had done with it is, if you remember, I think the character's name is Lance. Um, but Lance, the the champion from the Orange League and, uh, and Pokemon, uh, whatever the section of the anime is called, it's, it's the Orange League. Um, he carried a Dragonite on a chain. Boy, that looks weird. It looks... <laughs> uh, he carried it on a chain. So what I ended up doing is I had a a pin holder. It was like the same kind of thing where a pin attached to it, and uh, it would just hang around your chest, and you could take it off, sign things, click it back together. I had one of those. So I took the – it was just a little snap-together plastic piece. So I just I detached it from there, put a little hole in the top of the Pokeball, stuck it to there, and it was just – it was now a necklace. So I was carrying around uh, that Nitto King, not on my person like that, but on my car for years until that Pokeball finally just gave out. Um, it It's still somewhat together wherever the stupid thing is. Oh, nope, that's not it. I thought that was it over there. It's not. Um, it's still... It still holds up pretty well, but it doesn't stay together anymore. Like, the plastic is still somewhat good. It's just the actual Pokeball doesn't stay together anymore. Like, you try to click it together and just just falls apart. Uh, so that is... That is a fond memory of mine. Uh, Nero King is one of my favorites. And outside of that reason... Uh, the other reason is exactly what I was saying I don't want you to talk about. Uh, Nitto King has a history in the anime of being terrible. And a lot of people in the video games think it's terrible. But I, you can actually get a Nidoran in the original Red and Blue before you even battle Brock. You can get a Nidoran before you battle Brock. There is a patch of grass that you can get to and leave that is on the path to the Elite Four. So you go over to that patch, you can find Nidoran male, Nidoran female, and I believe Mankey over there too. So there you go. There's three Pokemon right there that you can use against Brock. Like I was saying earlier with dealing with uh, certain types. So you got a fighting type, and then two Pokemon that learn a, a fighting type pretty early on. And that fighting type for uh, the ne the male and female is uh, uh, double kick. They do learn double kick pretty early. So you got three Pokemon right there that'll just destroy Brock. Absolutely will de destroy him. So you don't have to take the Squirtle or the Bulbasaur to deal with him. Which is why I stuck with the Charizard because you need that for later on uh, for a few reasons. But, um, so I was using that guy and realized that he had a kind of a wide range of attacks in that 
that game. And what you got to remember back then is most Pokemon, they were either like, they had an element associated with them. They were, they were either uh, fire, water, grass, or electric. Or they were psychic and normal. We're not going to talk about rock because rock is kind of a null point. It didn't. It was neutral damage, kind of like normal. Um, it wasn't really strong against anything back then. Uh, and the thing is, they usually were just that. You could only get that kind of ability on that kind of Pokemon. So you couldn't get electric moves on a fire type. You couldn't get water moves on a normal type, if that makes sense. Nidoking, on the other hand, could learn Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower. Not to mention, it could learn a couple of different uh, fighting moves. So the way I had set up my Nidoking is because you needed HMs back there, I'd have Strength on it. So that's one really powerful normal type move that would hit a whole lot of different things. I would get Ice Beam on it because Ice Beam would allow me to hit pretty much any type of flying creature without any issue. And then uh, I would get, I think it was like uh, Thunder Punch. I think I would get Thunder Punch on it. So that would take care of like water and flying types, which the Ice Beam kind of was much better for flying types. But Thunder Punch meant I could take out uh, water types pretty easily. And then the Coup de Gras was Earthquake. Earthquake, Earthquake, Earthquake. If you can access Earthquake, use Earthquake. It's that good. Even in today's games, Earthquake is still just overpowered as heck. Um, so that was my setup for my Ditto King. And it was the first Pokemon I used to, to completely and utterly annihilate the Elite Four. And that was, let me say it again, it was uh, uh, Strength for a normal ability. It was just like, if you're doing neutral damage, it might as well have been Strength because it was the most powerful of the attacks you could have. Um, ice Beam for dealing with any kind of flying creatures. It doesn't matter what their other type is. If it's a flying creature, Ice Beam. Ice Beam, Ice Beam, Ice Beam. And I don't even mean flying as just like birds. I mean flying as in like dragons, as in uh, Aerodactyl, which is technically rock, or even ghost types. If it does not stay on the ground, you use Ice Beam on it. If it is in the water, you use Thunder Punch on it. So any kind of water creature. And then uh, Earthquake for anything that touches the ground. And I would you would just absolutely annihilate the entire Elite Four just with that one Pokemon. It was ridiculous. And a, a lot of people badmouthed it back then. I remember they even made fun of it in the anime with Giovanni and uh, some of the wild Nitto Kings that you would see in there. And I'm like, just, you know, walking through the entire game with this Nitto King just destroying everything. So, yeah, I know that goes against what I was just saying about, you know, not talking about OP Pokemon like Swampert, but. The, the difference here is nobody thinks Nidoking King is OP, except for me. Um, back then, it couldn't do that now. <laughs> like I tried to do it in more recent versions of uh, Red and Blue. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not nearly as strong as it was in Red and Blue. Not nearly as strong. Especially considering that they made Poison an actual type. And Poison is very weak to just about everything. It's it's probably, if it weren't for the fact that ice is the weakest type out there, I would say poison is probably the weakest. Now, that doesn't mean that poison doesn't have some of the strongest abilities, like, um, like the, the trap setup, I can't think of the name of it, or toxic. Like doing poison damage to anything, if you can get poison damage on something, that is amazing. The thing is, you don't need a poison type for most of those moves. You just need a Pokemon that can learn those moves. The poison type itself, as far as Pokemon, there aren't very many that are 
even close to being viable. Come to think of it, how come we don't have a poison type EV? Not that I would use it, but that's one of those types I don't understand why we don't have a poison type for EV on it. Dragon I understand because most dragons are giant lizards because um, you know this is a Japanese company and their idea of a dragon is a serpent. That's not a dragon. I'm sorry. That the the Asian version of a dragon is not a dragon. It's a, it's a serpent. You want a dragon? Go look at um, Deathwing. That's a dragon. Go look at Smog. That's a dragon. Don't go over there and look at the stupid uh, what is it? Falco. Falcor. Or any of the. Uh, any of the dragons from anything Chinese, Japanese, or Korean, those are those are serpents. Get over it. Make us a real freaking dragon. The closest we have to that is Shalmance. Salamance. That is the most dragon looking dragon of all of them. I don't even really consider Rayquaza an actual dragon. It's another serpent. Don't get me wrong, it's probably the coolest dragon in Pokemon though, but I'm 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 gonna admit that right there, right? Rayquaza is the is probably the coolest dragon in all of Pokemon. <laughs> I don't think it is a dragon though, because it doesn't look like a dragon. But based on the own games things, it is a dragon, so it is the coolest. Oh, I said seven minutes. We're we're ten over that. At 17 minutes so yep um we're gonna hold off right there i'm literally just gonna leave the game running right there uh we i'm not gonna leave it up and running i'm not gonna put you guys on hold or anything we're gonna end this video the stream right here i am gonna go off i'm going to take my puppies outside and uh then i'm gonna get some food in my belly and i will be right back typically that takes a you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not going to care. But typically on stream, that takes about an hour. So roughly an hour from now, uh, I will be back on to do the last half of the day. Uh, we're going to continue this. And I don't know if we'll get lucky. We are we're, we're going so slow. I've been spending so much time talking that we haven't really hatched that many eggs. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get there eventually. It may not be today. It may be a whole nother week before we get there. Or I could probably do some off-camera grinding and try to try to get this going. But we're doing so much that it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know what? You guys aren't going to care. I will see you later. I'm going to go eat. I'm going to take care of my puppies. Have a blessed day. And I will see you back in, an, in at least an hour. Bye for now.